percentage of the time. It's not a mandatory thing is what I'm guessing. It's if you, if there is time, you can help with this. Um, I know Madison got rid of it. Um, and uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I locked my keys in my car recently. So um, during COVID, so that was fun. But um, they no longer had that service um, when I was there. And I can also say as um, you know, a former sergeant in the army, um, we in a medical unit, we did humanitarian missions. Um, um, in different parts of the world. And that was a very wonderful thing. It not only for us, but also for peacekeeping and other kind of, so any kind of ambassadorship programs that we can do with the police, I think are benefit everyone. But again, I wouldn't suggest this necessarily if the budget didn't sustain it, nor if the police department didn't really think it was something in their purview. So I'm, I'm all for um, going with what Trustee Warren said. And I'm, I'm a third in favor. Um, on to number 13 then, please, um, Chief okay. or Lieutenant. Okay, uh, determine if we should continue to respond to property damage, crashes or accidents. Uh, again, we looked at the numbers pertaining to that particular category. And in 2018, we had 204 crashes total, uh, 2019, 190, and then 119 last year for a total of 513 crashes over that three year time span, an average of 171 per year. Overall, our crashes uh, take up on, on an average about 1.5% of our total call volume. Uh, in 2018, it was 1.8, 1.4 in 2019 and 1.26 in 2020. Um, there's multiple reasons why it might be beneficial to have an officer respond to the uh, these types of crashes, for one, a lot of times the crashes end up being in traffic and it's a safety issue and officers can get there and help safely block off traffic, help safely get those vehicles out of, out of the uh, intersection, out of the traffic lane and increase safety uh, for the individual people that are involved in the crashes. Um, there are times too where when with these types of crashes, it might be a property damage only crash, but the underlying cause of the crash could be something that, like a an operating while intoxicated situation. So now if we don't respond to that type of crash, the individual who was involved in that crash may drive away and get involved in another crash or a more severe crash down the road. And it's something that we should be taking action on as far as that goes. Um, and then there's also just the matter of, at times it turns out to be, a, or comes out as a property damage only crash, but over the time that the people are on scene, the effects of the crash may now be starting to be felt by one of the individuals and it morphs into a personal injury accident and something that we should be responding to. And if we weren't there to begin with, we would not, we may not know that that situation took place. So those are some of the things just to consider when determining whether or not we should uh, continue to respond to these types of crashes. Okay. I, having been in a couple of no injury crashes, I cannot, I mean, they were not in, um, Shorewood, but um, I cannot imagine because a vehicle, you know, it's such a big expense and the insurance company is going to want the report. And I just cannot imagine not having a police officer show up to the sort of a situation in Shorewood. So I would be strongly in favor that, continuing that's this. The point. That's an excellent point because we do prepare uh, a very detailed report for those types of situations. And if we did not do that or respond to do that, the individual parties themselves would have to basically self-report through a self-report form and it may not be as accurate or as thorough and it may delay their uh, processing of their their claim for their insurance. I agree. Uh, Trustee Warren, yep. or Trustee uh, Bockers, keep, any feedback? I'll keep this short. I agree with Trustee Stokerbrand. I'm fine leaving it. Uh, Trustee Bockers, did you care to weigh in? Okay, well, it's two out of three. Okay, number 14. Okay. The term online is reporting. Yeah, set up an online reporting system uh, for residents to report lower level property crime offenses. I mean, this is something that, that could be done. Uh, some of the things to consider or think about with that is um, on the back end, even though someone's filling out some information online, it's still going to require an officer to fill out the report. An officer is still going to need to go and document everything that needs to get documented and, and report the, the stolen items or stolen property uh, for purposes of reporting them to the state and the federal government and whatnot through our NIBRS reporting that we have to do. 
And depending on what information is inputted at that point in time, the officer may or may not have enough information to complete that report that need, needs to get filed on the back end. And so it's, it's something again, where you have the opportunity to go and have that personal interaction with the public. Um, you have a chance to uh, perhaps gather more facts or ask more questions than the person filing the report may, may necessarily think of, things that could increase overall safety or help identify a pattern or a trend of things that are happening that we can try to, to reduce or cut off from a law enforcement perspective by doing different types of patrolling or enhanced patrolling based off the information that we gather that may not come through that online submission where you potentially get more information to that personal interaction. Uh, and my question here would be, if we wanted to try this, like let's say we decided, well, this will do on a trial basis. Let's set this up on the website, see how it goes for a year. Um, and But to your point then, you know, this is where you're having officers interacting with people. Would it be hard to, I mean, if it were really was a manpower issue, I mean, is that officer responding to the property, low level property crime offenses, like someone's, someone's fence was broken? Um, I guess the it's hard to know because you tend to think in a binary way, right? Okay, if they're not responding to that, then what are they doing? And the answer is probably, well, it depends on the day, right? Right. I mean, if there's a missing person, it was probably all hands on deck to try to find that woman. Correct. Yes. Um, so would it be helpful on that day to say, you know, we are really busy with a missing person today, but we've got this online reporting set up for property damage. I don't know. I put it to you. I could just wait. I, I think I think the benefits of responding far away, the online reporting and your initial question of, of setting it up, I think it would be a lot to set up um, and to manage to, to test it when there's capacity in the system to handle these calls. So I think that's really what it's about, right? This is a big city thing. And so if you go to Milwaukee, if you're in Milwaukee, um, you know, you may call in your theft from your car. Um, but I just think we have the capacity here to do that. And I think it, it benefits I think people, when they call, they want to see somebody and just my view. And again, that may lead to other opportunities for discussion and those types of things. So um, again, we can try it. I, I'm open to anything. I just think that if it's a capacity issue, I would tell you that. But um, other than that, it would be a, 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 a policy decision to make. Okay, Trustee Bockhorst. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say uh, I, Appreciate what you said, Chief Nimmer. Um, and as someone who works in Milwaukee and hears about the uh, response time and um, you know the ability to speak with a human and have that human element benefits everyone. And I think that uh, so many people are tired of the online life anyway. So to even further push that on to our residents um, to maybe save money or what the rationale would be, I am in not, I'm not in agreement with that. Um, and also if we wanna have good relationships in the community amongst different um, organizations and groups, we really have to have a lot more interaction and less, uh, and also with online stuff, I'm, um, we've all experienced this, trolling can happen in any regard. It's a lot harder to, to lie to someone or to even misrepresent when you, or even to suss, it's a lot easier to suss things out and you know, detectives and others can say this, but um, when you're having a conversation versus asynchronous text-based communication, which often leads to ambiguity and, and um, negativity. So I would say that I support what the, uh, the police department is saying in this regard. Uh, Trustee Warren. Yeah, and just to kind of a personal anecdote for me, a few years back, we, uh, outside of our house, we had our, our, one of our vehicles broken into and they took a few small things and, um, you know, the police responded. Um, I can't remember the officer's name. Otherwise, I'd, I'd, say, I'd, I'd give him credit now, but they responded. It was a really positive experience. I mean, you know, even with these small property crimes, you feel, you know, it, you know, to have that personal touch point makes things feel a little bit better. And I can understand kind of the community relations aspect of it. So, um, so yeah, I'm in agreement with uh, what Trustee Stokeberg and Trustee Bacros said about keeping this in place, or keeping the current system in place. 
Uh, Trustee Bachers, you had one more additional comment. We have number. Yeah, three. I did. Thank you. Um, so yeah, Trustee uh, Warren brought up a really good point: is that it's a violating experience um, to be a victim of a crime at any level, and to then compound that with uh, you know impersonalization and whatnot. I don't think that's something our residents. I think we all know that the residents in Shore would really appreciate having a high level of responsiveness from all departments. So um, I would hate to take I would hate to take that away. Okay, so that's three in favor, and on to number fifteen, uh, Chief or okay. Lieutenant, please. Okay, determining if the village would like to have sworn officers respond to parking complaints or animal complaints of non sworn CSO is not available. The the non sworn officers do handle the majority of the parking complaints and the majority of the animal complaints when they are on duty. They are the first ones dispatched to those. Uh, if they are not available or they're not on duty, then the sworn officer, if available, will go and handle those calls generally. Um, again, we looked at the data, we looked at the numbers, and we're talking about roughly 1.3% of our average calls over, over the last three years. I mean, it's a very low volume. Okay, the straw poll again, I vote yes. So they continue to do that if the non-sworn officers, CSOs are available. Anyone else would like to weigh in? Uh, Trustee Bachros, Trustee Warren? Sure, I would say that um, unless there were a compelling reason by the police department or the community to, but at this point, it doesn't sound like that. Although, so I would say keep it as is. Make it three for three. I agree with everything that's been said before. Me. Okay, thank you. And then Chief, did you want to go into vehicle pursuits at this point? We have uh, five minutes. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be enough time. <clears throat> okay. And did it, anyone it, want, to, want to provide any more input to the Chief and the Lieutenant about uh, pursuing new record management models at this point? I would say that, um, you know, we have other information that needs to be had. So they, they've heard that we're open to looking at new uh, man models, but at this point, we don't have enough information to make a decision. If I could just I'll also just, um, so what I'll do with the four recommendations this, that you've made regarding the, these types of calls, I'll work with Rebecca on how to get that scheduled for the full board for review. And approval. I'm assuming that's what you would want to do with that. And maybe, maybe there's an opportunity for when we have consensus on certain things that maybe we package these up together and I could take them, I could work with Re Rebecca on that, but take them together to the board so we could approve them all. Um, I don't know. I hope oh, let that some ad advice from you guys would be helpful on that. Trustee Bachros or Trustee Warren, are you comfortable with that suggestion from the chief? Makes sense to me because it's more comprehensive and less piecemeal and uh, organized. So I'm fine. So the recommendation is to take all four together to the board. Is that what I'm? Correct. Yeah, yeah, that, that, sound, that sounds good to me. Um, and I think I think the explanation in the background is really key here because what, where I, when I read the packet, I was in a different place from when I listened to, to, to you. So. I think that it's it's important to contextualize all these things and you know what percentage and think about the positive impacts on the community. So I think that'll be an important conversation to have once we hit the board level. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so I think you know if you just include a little bit of that data in the packet for that night, yep. um, it will help the other trustees with their decision making process. Okay. And uh, I'm sorry, it looks like we're not going to get to community engagement or uh, vehicle pursuits tonight. That's okay. Okay. Uh, anyone, uh, Mr. Carlson, you'd like to make a comment? We have uh, a minute. I just, I noticed that the recording, that there was no recording um, for about the first hour and 15 minutes of tonight's meeting. Um, so I don't know if that means there will be a much more detailed um, note taking process. I think that entire discussion of records management is was massively important, and uh, most people would like to have a full idea of what it entailed. So I'm, I guess, I'm asking how how will it be documented? 
Uh, and I'm sorry, I was not running the Zoom. Uh, Chief, do you have any information on us on this for us? Um, so I, I wasn't supposed to run the Zoom either. So um, I was notified that it wasn't. I, I didn't uh, expect to do that. So um, I was told halfway through that I wasn't recording. So I hit record once I knew that. So um, I, I did take some committee meeting notes. Um, Again, I think this, this topic is going to be discussed much more in detail moving forward. So I'll put as many of the notes that I have in there um, for the uh, next committee meeting. I also took some notes too, Chief, if you want to, I can collaborate with you on some minutes. Sure. As did I. I took some very bad notes as well. So <laughs> I, I would say any notes submitted outside uh, by uh, elected officials should be noted as such just because... Um, we don't have the same level of accountability that staff does. And I just would like to, like to know who said what. So I guess I'm just wondering, is there no process to automatically record at this point? Like every committee meeting, every board. It was an meeting. oversight, I think, right? Right, right. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I think uh, someone I has never, to hit the button. Yeah, I've never Sorry. done it before, so. Pandemic times. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Moved by Captain uh, course, uh, seconded by Trustee Warren. All in favor, aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.